Good morning. As we begin our worship service today, let us pray for the family of Miss Ada Lomax, who recently went home to her Lord and Savior. Let us keep the Lomax family in prayer at this time of bereavement. She was a dear member of Dixwell Church, and we will miss her dearly. God bless the family at this time. Good morning and greeting to everyone. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Frederick J. Streets, I am pleased to welcome you to our worship service at Dixo United Congregation, United Church of Christ in New Haven, Connecticut. Today is Sunday, January 10th, 2021, the second Sunday in the new year. I am Kayla Jackson, a lifelong member of this great church. We hope that you find our service to be a source of inspiration and support in your faith journey, especially in the new year. A new year through our faith brings new possibilities and new opportunities. May God bless you and may you enjoy the service. Amen. Good morning. I'm Amanda Simpson. In addition to Kayla Jackson, who gave the welcome, joining us as participants in today's service are Amelia Esdale, Miles and Mackay Anderson, Sophia Sasnaf Rojas, Mary Elizabeth Green, India Battle, Mr. Ronald Pollard, and Reverend Dr. Jerry Streets. We greatly appreciate your financial support and ask that you continue to make your donations to the church. You can send your donation to the church or through your bank. Information about giving can be found on our church website at dixwellucc.org, or you can call the church at 203-787-5839 and leave a message. We will return your call. Please be mindful of those coping with illness. Ms. Donna Ellis, Mrs. Carol E. Brown, Deacon Kirk Baird, Mrs. Carme Seabury, Mr. Arthur Bowen, Mr. and Mrs. Marcus and Margaret McRaven, Mrs. Aldiv Pritchett, Mrs. Joyce Pritchett, Mr. Wendell Wallace Judas, Deacon Annie Lowther, Moderator Dr. Charles Warner Sr., Ms. Dina Donaldson, and Mr. Theodore Brown. We say happy birthday to those who were born in the month of January. Gerald Clark, Helena Rogers, Deacon Ron Manning, Thomas Lovia Brown, Fanny Jackson, Alex Esdale, Jocelyn Dent, Maxine Davis, my grandfather Vernon Simpson, Reverend Jerry Streets, Carme Seabury, Thelma Grant, Scott Brown, Reverend Pat Parker, Keona Dubois, Faith Philpot, RJ Robinson Thomas, and Chioma Lena Nawanyanwu. We say happy anniversary to Carol E. Brown and Teddy Brown Sr., who celebrate 63 years of marriage. A very important announcement regarding the church annual meeting. The Dixwell Avenue Congregational UCC annual churchwide meeting will be held on Sunday, February 7, 2021. This will be a Zoom meeting. Details will follow. We are also sharing with you the following correspondences sent to our senior pastor streets and our congregation from the family of Abina Tyler Sims. Thank you for your sympathy. There are not enough words to fully express our heartfelt thanks for the sympathy, love, and support you have extended to our family during this time of loss. Dear Reverend Streets and Dixwell UCC family, thank you very much for acknowledging the death of my mother. Although she was not active at Dixwell in her adult life, our family's roots are deeply embedded in the church. 
I have fond memories of walking through the sanctuary of the church with my grandmother, Nerissa Tyler. Rhonda McCall. Abina Tyler Sims was the sister of Diana Tyler and the daughter of Mr. Eben and Mrs. Nerissa Tyler, who was the accomplished organist at Dixwell for many years. From the family of Miss Elsie Blackshear, beloved missionary board member. Dear Dixwell, the Blackshear family sends a deeply heartfelt thank you for all that was done to celebrate mom's life and legacy on September 29th. Opening the church during these trying times was so appreciated and made such a difference. For sure, mom was smiling and was grateful. Thank you for also assisting with the repast. Your contribution was very helpful. Warm regards, Elsie Chapman. From Mariah Clark. Dear Reverend Streets and church family, thank you very much for your generous support in recognition of my college graduation. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and happy. I appreciate very much the framed verse, Matthew 5, verse 16, and the check that will be helpful in encouraging my future education. Although my in-person graduation could not take place, I know that God is looking out for me and has something big in store for all members of the class of 2020. Thank you for accepting me and my family into our church family. And I look forward to when we can gather together again in person safely. Sincerely, Mariah Clark. Mariah Clark is a 2020 UConn graduate, daughter of Dr. Deborah Bond and William Clark, and granddaughter of Gerald Clark. From Regina Mason of California, Help a stranger, praise a child, light a candle, share your love, sing for joy, lend a hand, pray for peace, understand. Dear Reverend Dr. Streets, wishing you and the entire Dixwell Church family all of God's blessings now and always. Peace and joy this season and throughout the year. Know that the love, generosity, and hospitality shown to me and to my church family from Dixwell will never be forgotten. May you all stay safe and well in these trying times. Sincerely, Regina E. Mason. Regina Mason is descendant of William Grimes and editor of his book, The Life of William Grimes, The Runaway Slave, and author and director of Gina's Journey a docudrama about her quest to find her ancestor. We thank all of our correspondents. Your messages are most meaningful. They allow us to strengthen our connections and to share an even greater spiritual bond. And now, let us worship God. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm chapter 29, verse 11. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Gracious God, we come to this time of worship, giving you thanks and praising your name for your graces, asking that you be present with us in this worship service that we may be able to bear our burdens and to be grateful for our blessings and be a witness of your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Greetings and good day to everyone, and a happy, happy new year. year. Today's responsive reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who was, who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether there were about twelve of them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Dear Lord, you are our God during our weary years, and you are with us during our silent tears. You have provided a bridge for us over troubled waters. Thank you. A virtual call to worship summons us to an approximate togetherness. Sometimes we come to you with Zoomed prayers and parking lot praises. Our joyful noise can hide from the world the complaints of our souls and our aching hearts. With sorrows too wrenching for words, we moan and breathe deeply our prayers to you. We speak to you in our music our poetry, our dance, our art, and in our silence. From a doctor's office, hospital room, or our kitchen table, or from a pew in a sacred space, or on sidewalks or street corners, dirt roads or concrete pavements, on our jobs or standing in an unemployment line. We never cease calling upon you, because wherever we are, you are with us daily, and our very living daily is our prayer of hope to you. We listen for you in our anguish and in our joy. We listen for you in voices crying for justice, for peace, for help, and for strength. We listen for the healing of our wounds and feelings of woundedness that are found in our reading and hearing your sacred words 
and in the grace-filled actions of those whose gifts make us laugh and feel good about being alive. We pray for our nation that this time of its crisis be an opportunity for an old dream to have new life, a renewal to our co mutual commitment that all of us have life, liberty, and freedom in pursuit of our happiness. Let us lay down by the riverside our burdens in all forms of human oppression and war. We come to you, O God, as we are, and with all we hope to be in this world. We come to you, O God, standing on your promise to be with us always and to make a way when there seems to be no way to go or turn. We come to you, O Lord, for in our faith in you we find strength to endure today and hope for tomorrow. We come to you, merciful God, to a holy pause in which to find rest for our souls. We come to you with decisions to make and to celebrate our thanksgivings. We come to you, our Creator, so that we can come to ourselves and know that we are precious in your sight. We come to you with humility, and yet also with the boldness of one who is your beloved. And for this, we give thanks. In Christ's name, Amen.
Good morning, dear family and friends. Today's gospel is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. May a strong And may a trouble show that you need God. And may a battle's in the way they should. And may a whole life prove that God is good. And may a My friends, I would like to reflect with you today from the theme, When We Became Believers. When We Became Believers. A clergy colleague often said when he made an appeal for people to give to the church that we were baptized, pocketbook, in all. His statement was getting at something broader than just how we think of financially giving to the church. The Christian ritual of baptism, whether one is sprinkled or fully submerged into water, is a symbolic and communal act by which the believer is acknowledging to God and the church community their belief in God, and their commitment to beginning to live a life of faith. Ritual cleansing with water was a practice that preceded Christian baptism. Baptism for the Christian church is more than a ritual cleansing, as important as ritual cleansing may be in some religious traditions. The Christian Church teaches that for one to be baptized, they must be baptized with water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It means that the person being baptized is repenting and 
turning away from living a life of sin. Now when the boyfriend of a clergy friend's daughter joined his church and was baptized, my clergy friend said that he held him under the water just a little longer than he did other people. It is said that God in Christ identified with us so much as human beings that Jesus was baptized not only to show his connection to us, but to also signal a rejection of sin itself and as an example for us to follow. Soon after he was baptized, Jesus was led into the wilderness where he confronted having to deal with the temptations of life that could distract him from being faithful to God. Now, many Christians and many Christian traditions uphold that the physical act of being baptized need be done only once. However, I have known people who chose to be baptized again later in their life as a sign of their feeling the need to do so. Most religious traditions teach and have some form of ritual cleansing practice. Wanting to be baptized for Christians begins with an awareness and desire to feel connected to God, that without this relationship to God, one senses being less than who they can and ought to be. A confession of having faith in God and a confession of needing God is like John Wesley's expression of our having our hearts strangely warmed, warmed by the Spirit of God. Being baptized is an outward expression of an inward turning away from sin and turning toward God. It is a symbol of the beginning, the beginning of our faith journey. What awakens us to our need to become baptized and what we acknowledge by becoming baptized sets us on a life course of discerning our walk with God. It is a path of knowing God and sometimes it's a journey that makes us feel that we really don't know God. It is a journey of both doubt and faith. It is a road that has God as its end point. What kindles the flame of our desire and moves us to be baptized can guide us on our road of faith. It can be like an eternal flame that does not burn out but gives us light and warmth. I know, however, that some people feel as though they have lost that initial hunger and hope of having a right relationship with God that they initially felt that led them to be baptized. You may know someone who yearns to have the hope and joy they once felt when they decided to be baptized. Since then, however, life for them has stolen their faith and the courage it gives us to live. Some people feel that all they can do is disappoint God, that somehow their baptism didn't stick to them. Here is something to consider. What stirred in us, causing us to become baptized, does not die. It is there perhaps covered by layers of pains and failures, but nevertheless, it remains. Years ago, the words to a popular gospel song included, Take me back, dear Lord, take me back to the place where I first met you, where I first believed. 
Perhaps what we need to do is not to go back, but to bring forth with us the faith that we once expressed in God when we got baptized. What started in our baptism continues to grow. That is, learning how to trust and lean upon God and believe in that God loves and forgives us. So many people who are attempting to live a life of faith drag around with them feelings of spiritual inadequacy, self-loathing, always thinking that they cannot measure up to what they think are God's expectations of them. God asks that we not strive for perfection, but to be faithful. I'm also wondering what impact will the pandemic have on our faith and what we believe about God. Surrounded by grief and, and feeling embraced by so much fatalism, people of faith can easily become disconsolate not because we are bad or weak, but because we are human beings. We cannot grow weary without sometimes despair, or we can grow weary with our struggle to live a meaningful life. All plant life need air, light, and water to live and thrive. The potential for their growth is embedded in their plant nature. Inside of us, there is a capacity for our being at peace with ourselves, at peace with one another, and at peace with God. Faith in God is for us what air, light, and water is to plants. The act of being baptized is, as an, is an important ritual, signaling that an inner conversion and transformation is taking place as a result of our belief in God being awakened in us. This act moves beyond and is bigger than itself because Christians believe that it points to God's Spirit living in us as God was in Christ. Therefore, one is baptized not only with water, but also in the name of Jesus Christ, that name which is above all names. Our sense of being committed to God can vary over time. How we live out this promise may also take many forms. At times it can feel like a burning, intense light guiding us, or a thin, flickering flame about to go out. However, what we felt at baptism is never extinguished because it is a part of who we are as creations of God, the divine in each of us. In the story of the baptism of Jesus, after he was baptized, he heard God's voice say that God was pleased with him. Now perhaps, my friends, the essence of this affirmation is that God was pleased that Jesus had made the commitment to follow his sense of God's will for his life. The path that Jesus followed was filled with unimaginable suffering and a cruel death on a cross. What was most important to Jesus was remaining faithful through it all faithful to his sense of being a child of God, no matter what. In the end, it was his 
fidelity to God, the same desire to follow God that led him in the beginning to be baptized, like air, water, and light is to a plant, sustained him until he declared, it is finished. Until then for us, like him, until then for us, like him, we hold on. God bless you. Continue to rest, rule, and abide in your heart, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>